I'm Tony Keat, the Christmas Light Guy. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial, I'll show you two different methods to retrofit the Home Depot Jumbo LED bulbs using RGB LEDs. Also, how to model each method in X lights and some handy tips and tricks. Let's get started. I was lucky enough to find the Home Depot Jumbo LED bulbs in both models and in the color white. The C9 model, which I bought 16 new this year, and the round model, which I bought 50 from a friend of mine that were already retrofitted. Let me show you an example of the C9 model. This is what the C9 model looks like. Let me show you an example of what the round model looks like. The round model looks like this. I use two different methods to retrofit the bulbs to RGB LEDs. The first method uses multiple bullet pixel LEDs, and the second method uses a single module with multiple LEDs such as a puck style module. Here is an example of the first method using a multiple bullet pixel LEDs. As you can see, I use six bullet pixel LEDs. Here is an example of the second method using a single LED module. This one uses a puck style module. I've also seen dome and round styles available. The first step in retrofitting the bulbs is to determine which method you will use. Multiple bullet pixel LEDs or a single LED module. The second step is to decide the spacing between each bulb. This will determine the length of wire or extensions you will use. How and where you're using your bulbs in your display may be a big factor in determining the spacing for each bulb. For example, if you're using it on a tree or a large area, the spacing may be wider. If you're using it on your house, the spacing may be narrower. I used six feet spacing between the C9 bulbs and the round bulbs had 10 foot extensions. Also, you will need to decide how many bulbs will be in a single string. Since I have 16 C9 bulbs, I hardwired eight per string and the round bulbs have extensions on each. If you use extensions, then you have full flexibility on how many bulbs are on a single strand or string. However, there is a cost involved with that flexibility. The third step in retrofitting the bulbs is to disassemble and remove the three AA batteries, screws, switches, LED, wire, battery clips, and optionally, the hook on the top of the base. Here's a tip. Consider using metal hooks as the hooks on the bulbs are made of plastic and do have a tendency to break. The fourth step in retrofitting the bulbs is to drill the holes for either multiple bullet pixel LEDs or for a single LED module. Remember my C9 bulbs, I use six bullet pixel LEDs per bulb. Here's a tip. I drilled the top and bottom of the battery case separately. This was much easier than trying to drill both at the same time. I really didn't measure the holes, but I just eyeballed the holes on the top and the bottom and I had no issues pushing in the pixels when I went to assemble them. In my round bulbs, 35 millimeter 9 LED puck style modules were used with three pin waterproof pigtails. What's convenient about these LED modules is the screw nut fits perfectly between the battery holder. This makes it very convenient to mount the LED modules. The fifth step is to drill one or two holes for the pigtails or glands. The holes or glands can be on the top or side of the base. Here are a few examples. The first example is with one gland on the top of the base. The second example is with two glands on the top of the base. The third example is with two holes on the side for either pigtails or glands. Here's a tip. Leave the push button switch mounted if you're not going to be drilling holes in the top of the base for glands or wires. The button is water resistant and will help keep water out of the bulb. If you remove the switch and add a gland, there is a raised plastic square area on the inside of the base that you will need to remove before a PG7 will screw on. Here is what the raised plastic area looks like on the inside of the base. I used a Dremel tool to grind away this area. 
Here's what it looks like after the raised plastic square area has been removed. The last step in retrofitting the bulbs is to either hardwire your bulbs in your desired string length or use extensions to connect your bulbs together. Another tip is to drill a 1 8 to 3 16 hole in the end of the bulb. This will allow any water that gets into the bulb to drain easily. Now I've explained how to retrofit the bulbs, let's jump over to x lights and I'll show you how to model these props. I've opened up x lights and selected the Controllers tab. In this demo, I'm using two ES Pixel Sticks with version 4.0 Beta 4 firmware as my controllers. However, any modern Pixel controller can be used. Press the Visualize button on the first controller. You can see it has my string of eight C9 bulbs attached and is set to eight pixels. I will show you why these are set to eight pixels later in the video. Press the Visualize button on the second controller. You can see it has my string of eight brown bulbs attached and is also set to eight pixels. Close the window. Moving over to the Layout tab, I've already created two single line models with eight pixels each. Representing the C9 bulbs on the bottom and the round bulbs on the top. Let's go look at the settings for the C9 bulbs. Expand the co controller connection and notice I have the brightness set to 100%. Also I have set the group count and set a value of 6. This informs the controller this model has 6 pixels acting as 1 pixel. This is because each C9 bulb has 6 bullet pixels and I want to model it as 1 pixel per bulb. Expand the appearance if it's not already expanded and you will notice that I set the pixel size to 20 for the C9 bulbs. Okay, let's look at the settings for the round bulbs. Expand the controller connection if it's not already expanded. Notice I have set the brightness to 100%, but I have not set the group count. This is because the LED modules in the round bulbs only require one pixel of control, even though there are nine physical LEDs in the model. Let's go ahead and expand the appearance option. If it's not already expanded. And notice that I set the pixel size to 30 for the round bulbs to make them larger and to distinguish them between the C9 bulbs. Moving over to the Sequencer tab, I've already created a 30 second sequence with three different effects. Each effect is 10 seconds long. Okay, it's time for a demo. Let me start the video of the actual bulbs. Give me just a second. Okay, I've started the video. Now I will enable the output. Let's look at the first effect which is the single strand effect. We can see both sets of lights are working properly. The C9 bulbs with the six bullet pixels are acting as one. This is due to the set group count selected and set to a value of six. Also, the round bulbs with LED modules are acting as one pixels. Now let's take a look at the other effects. Moving over to the second effect, which is the marquee effect. Here we can see some nice vibrant colors. And moving over to the third effect, which is the curtains effect. This effect produces different shades moving from side to side. Now I've confirmed everything is working properly, I would like to compare the brightness between the two bulbs. I'll change the brightness percentage on each of the models to 30%. Moving over to the Layout tab, select the C9 bulbs, expand the controller connections, 
and I will change the brightness to 30%. Tab off the value, select the round bulbs, change the brightness to 30%, tab off, save. I'll move over to the controllers tab. I will upload the output on each controller. Press upload output. I want to make sure the controllers receive the brightness change. Now I'll move over to the sequencer tab. I'm going to enable the output again. I'll start the video. Give me just a second. Okay. Select the effect. Now we can compare the brightness of the bulbs. We can see the round bulbs are brighter. This would be expected as the round bulbs have 9 LEDs in the module versus 6 bullet pixels in the C9 bulbs. I've actually seen some modules with 12 LEDs in the same size module. Since the two methods have differences in brightness, you may need to adjust the brightness level accordingly when running your show. Also, both methods produce significant brightness and good light diffusion within the prop. I've shown you two different methods to retrofit the Home Depot jumbo LED bulbs to use RGB LEDs. The first method is to use multiple bullet pixel LEDs and the second method is to use a single module with multiple LEDs. I've also shown you how to model each method in X-Lights using group count or as a single pixel. And finally, some handy tips and tricks. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new from it. If you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like my video and subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.